Hey everybody, new Friday, new video, or whenever you're watching this. And today, this video starts a new series about a topic that will never get old, which is performance when it comes to Nox.js. Let's go. Before we get to the topic straight away, yes, you heard it correctly. I will start a new series on that YouTube channel called Next Performance in Depth. So there are lots of good performance tips out there, right? You can use like lazy loading code, splitting, next image, and so on, so on, so on. Um, but in here, we'll pick one topic for each video and we'll go really in depth explaining why things behave, how to improve and how these improvements look like. Okay. And of course, we'll talk about some things that are not that well known, right? Uh, the evergreens, sure, we'll have a look at that as well, but also some things that you might not know about yet. When it comes to video release, we'll still do one video a week and sometimes it will be performance video in a series, sometimes something totally different. And here we go. The first topic will be the underscore underscore next underscore underscore object, also known as the payload. That was already a big thing in next two and is still a thing in next three. Now, in addition, also comes the payload.json. If you, for example, generate your site and have payload extraction enabled and to show what the problem with that is and how you can make it better, I've prepared a little demo application. It's really a small little demo project to show you what's happening here. And we have just one page, you could even move that in app.view if you want to, that does a use fetch call here to some endpoint we defined in Nitro on our server side here, and then rendering a few things. So far, so good. And the next config, it's empty, just so you know. We use Next 3.8 at the time of recording, 3.8.2. And let's have a look how that application looks in the browser. And here we say, okay, it's rendering some name, it's rendering some flavor text and an icon. If some of you might recognize, yes, that's an item or weapon from Destiny 2, the game. I've used to use the Destiny 2 API for a project, link in the description, that's also open source and built with Next in view. And it's an API that returns lots of data. And well, that's what the video is about. <laughs> Lots of data. If we now open the dev tools here and refresh the page, be aware we're still on the dev server, we get a whopping 76 kilobyte, right? No text compression, nothing, just like the, the raw size 76 kilobyte for this and just the HTML document. Now you might think, um, how, how is that the case? How can that be? Well, if we check the page source here, we'll see. Mm. Okay, nothing crazy going on, right? That looks all fine. But, well, I have to disappoint you. If we scroll more and more, here we see, oh, lots of data coming in here, right? There, underscore, underscore, next, underscore, data, underscore, underscore, which will eventually land in the window dot underscore, underscore, next, underscore, underscore in here. So here we have the data and then some key, which we'll come to in a bit, and all the data here. And I might think, wait, we'll, we'll just show that heading, right? And the flavor text and the icon. Where does that data come from? And if we would have, have multiple pages here, we could say, okay, let's navigate a little bit and see the API call happening in the browser console and DevTools. But here we don't have that case because it's server rendered, right? So what we do is we jump back in the code and have a look where the data comes from. Back in the code, we see, okay, yeah, we called it endpoint. Luckily, this is defined in our case in our Nitro endpoint, but the same issue could, could exactly happen like that with an external API. And if we have a look, right, we only need these information here. We don't need more than that. And in here, in our endpoint, yes, we have a lot of things, a lot of, lot of, lot of things. Because this is more or less, right, what the API returns by default. And that's also a very common scenario in your case, right? Sometimes you have an API that you call, let's say you want to get a list of blog posts, but you don't want to get always the full title, description, body, and comments maybe. Sometimes you just want to have a title, maybe a date, and a little excerpt. So what can we do here, right? How can we avoid that, first of all, the API requests are that big, and then the HTML and the payload, that underscore, underscore, next, underscore, underscore, will be that bloated. Well, 
now we can start saying, okay, you, you know what? In our case, like that API is under our control. We could just say, okay, we will change that. We will just return what we need. And that's, that's great, especially if that's in our control, right? Here we have a Nitro endpoint. Perfect, we can do that. But what if we can't? What if that's an external API we have to use? Well, and there the first option would be, okay, great, sure, we can also create a Nitro endpoint for that, call the API there, and then call the Nitro endpoint. And it's also totally valid. But sometimes you can't just add a new endpoint or new query for everything. So while that's the preferred way, right? Creating either like a proxy API endpoint, the Nitro, and then have a little transformation layer and a good old backend for frontend pattern. Sometimes you, you don't want that. You don't want either that much work or you need to have that request and just get a few more things. So especially if you use static site generation, you don't even need these extra endpoints. You can do it a bit easier. So if we go back to our index.view here, we have this use fetch call, right? And that use fetch call, when we statically generate our site, that won't be there anymore. It will all read from the payload that we save. And that's the trick here. We can use the transform property, which is actually a function, and it will take the input. And in the end, we return here, what will be saved into the payload under that weird key that we've seen before, which is automatically generated. So here we can say, look, we only need that info, good, let's just do that. Return name input dot item dot name. And the same goes for the flavor text and uh, for the icon source. So even here we can say, look, item dot uh, input dot item dot what we did before. And now we also see that the type of data changed from the original one, let me quickly remove that and show you once again, that came from Nitro, like the very big one, to whatever the transform function returns. And that's amazing because now we also get some errors here saying, ah, oh, that's not up to date and that's correct. Now we can remove the item part and save this. And we should check out the browser now and see what happened. If we reload our application now, then we see, ah, way better, not like 70 something kilobyte, but just 2.2. And also, if we take a look at window underscore underscore next underscore underscore, we have the data here under the same key and saying, ah, that's exactly what we defined in our transform function. So what does that mean for our problem with a super huge payload and a big HTML document returned? Well, first of all, if you have control over the API, then either change it at a new endpoint that just returns a subset, maybe add a filter, query parameter, and so on. If that's another team, discuss it with your team, of course, and find a solution. Or if you use something like GraphQL, it's a no-brainer because then you don't have that issue of like over or under fetching. And if you use server-side rendering that's not static side generation, then you might want to use some kind of API endpoint in Nitro, which calls the actual API for an external API that you maybe can't control, and then have a little transformation layer. That's also how I did it for the Destiny 2 API in the project, if you want to have a look. Not that tidy though, but still have a look if you want to. And if you use static site generation, well, then you don't even need the whole hassle. You can do it very easily by using the transform function that's available in the options part in use async data or use fetch as we've just shown. And then you will ensure that your payload is quite minimal. That way you can even combine it and say, oh yeah, I have an API endpoint that returns some general information and I want to reduce it here and there. And as a bonus, if you use Nux content, for example, there you have that query content function and then even can say, oh, please only give me certain fields, please remove some things. So that's also a good way to reduce the size of your payload. No big underscore underscore next underscore underscore object anymore. No big payload JSON and we're good to go. If you're interested in that back and front end part, I'll release another video on that, well, in a bit. Stay tuned. Don't forget to subscribe and drop in the comments what you hear next about. If you have any performance questions and wonder, oh, how can we improve that? No worries, we'll have a look at all of them. Thanks for watching, happy hacking, and see you in the next video.